Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason and here I talk about all things story. The story I'm talking about today is one of my own. We have hit episode 59 of my ongoing series, Worth 1000 Words, where I write a 1000 word short story based on a piece of artwork on the spot. And this week I revisited an artist um, unbeknownst to myself. It just sort of happened that way. Um, I saw it scanning as I always do. Turned out to be an artist I wrote a story for last year. Well, year one, I should say, the collection of the first 52 episodes. However, this story did not take me to the place that I imagined. And, and I talk about this more in the writing analysis and my final thoughts, but I think this story really represents sort of the heart of what I'm trying to do and trying to learn and experience as I hone my craft, as I get better, hopefully get better. But anyway, before we get too far into it, let's talk about the music. So I revisited again another bleak ambient musician called Camera Height, and the album I listened to is from 2005. It is called The Star Wheel. Why did I choose it? Well, it has a gloomy gnarled tree on the cover and it, it kind of felt like i should listen to an album that has a gloomy tree on it because i'm writing a story that has a gloomy tree in it perhaps we will find out all right now let's check out this week's artwork this week's artwork is titled curse of the rising sun and it's by an artist named artem demura out of Falgrim, russia now i have done one of artem's pieces before and i wasn't looking <laughs> to do another one uh, this one just caught my eye, and then, pleasant surprise, it's from uh, an artist I admire. So let's take a closer look here. So we have this very, very wide, very broad painting. And we have, it looks like a marsh or swamp of some kind, just a flooded land. And off in the distance, we have a single tree standing. Why the other ones are not, I don't know. But there is a, an old rundown house sitting beneath that tree. And there's an old pickup as well. But something interesting is lurking in that tree. And to zoom in, and, and if you go to the Art Station page, you'll see as well that uh, he has some more tighter shots, just so you can see some of the detail. But there is a noose hanging from that tree. But most interestingly, I think, and I, I think this is hidden quite well, but also visible, is if you look at the very center of the image, in the clouds, above that central mountaintop, you'll see what appears to be a cloaked figure made of clouds lurking in the clouds. So clearly something ominous, something terrible is possibly happening here. If the noose wasn't indication enough. So this one I'm sure will be interesting. It'll be a fun challenge like they all are. So thank you, Artem, again for contributing your work to, uh, to my inspiration for this writing. So that said, let's see what I came up with. Some stories don't make much sense. Some stories don't have beginnings, middles, or endings. Some stories aren't even stories. Unable to be told, unable to be expressed with words, they pump their truths through the veins of the earth to fill marshes, feed trees, much like this stretch of land right here. Well, one tree. The rest didn't do so good, clearly. Drowned, I reckon, with those dark truths that were too much for them. But that one tree, the one with two prominent boughs shading an otherwise ordinary house, where a run-down white pickup might as well have dropped from the sky, because no one, no time, nowhere ever saw it drive up any road, was able to take those truths to grow into something frightening. Now you might be thinking, that tree doesn't look frightening at all. In fact, it looks like a nice place to sit down and read a book. You might be thinking that, but you'd be wrong. Take a closer look. Go on. I'll wait. See that there? A thing that looks like it might be a broken branch? Well, it's not a broken branch. It's an end. Not the end of the story, mind you. If you think it's the end, then you weren't listening to the most important part of what I said about some stories just not making much sense, not having a structure to please, to disappoint, to sadden, or anything else that might find its way into the primitive desires of our small minds. Anyhow, about the end hanging from that tree, whoever lives in that house thought it was an end. For him, for her, I'd tell you who it was if I knew. It has been an end for many. 
Such a simple device. A rope tied on itself to create a loop. A circle just big enough to slip over your head. Just below your jawline. And step off high enough to make it quick. Easier that way. Less pain. Who likes pain? Do you? Didn't think so. You'd like to know what else there is to tell about that rope hanging from that tree, wouldn't you? It's not mine to tell. And if I knew, I wouldn't tell you anyhow. I'm not a storyteller. This isn't a story. I bet you wonder what that person inside that old house is doing right now. I bet you have a guess or two. The chimney is a clue. Smoke rising up out of it like signals are trying to be made. The light in that window. Is the person up early or up late? Dawn is coming, so it could be either one. Do you want to know which one I think it is? Of course you do. But I ain't telling. I told you, I'm not a storyteller. I see you leaning closer, trying to get a better look. Come to your own conclusions and make that story you so desperately seek. Because we all seek stories. Wired for it, I suppose. Images, words, patterns. Tell me what story you see. Want to keep it to yourself, eh? For yourself. I can understand that. You might be self-conscious that it's not good enough. That this macabre display you see before you exudes so much more than what you can concoct in that head of yours. The key is not to think. Not to imagine. Let it be. Of course we can get closer. Nothing to fear. It's just an old house and an old truck. Sure, there's a noose hanging from that tree. But what if it just looks like a noose from here? And up close, you come to find it's a rope that used to hold a swing. The wind just kicked it up all funny. And from this angle, right where we are, it looks like a noose. I said there wasn't a road, but there could be. You don't look like you have the attire for wading through that marsh. That is, if it's a marsh at all. Could be a puddle, an inch deep from the rain you weren't here to see. All right, all right. We can take the dry way. Would you look at that? There is a road. Tire tracks too. The truck must run after all. Strange. Seeing things from a different vantage changes the truth. Or am I just pulling your chain? Nah, I wouldn't do that. Would you look at that? It is a noose after all. Haunting. I guess that explains the visage of death himself up there in the clouds, rising above that distant mountain. Maybe if you stand here, you'll see him better. Now a noose and death and an old run-down house with an old run-down truck is pretty bleak sight, isn't it? How does it feel standing up close? I could hang you from that tree. I could take you inside that house and torture you or serve you a fine meal by that warm fire. See what I did there? I lied earlier. Sorry, but I did. All stories do make sense. It just depends on how you tell them. Where you're standing. They don't have beginnings, middles, and ends though. I was truthful about that. They're circular, looping back on themselves. The problem is, we're always trying to find those guideposts. Once you shed that concept completely, you see everything how it is. Still confused. That's okay. We can talk more inside where it's warm. Something about the dawn never sat right with me anyhow. And it's coming fast. Or is a lock there on the horizon? Might be a better view from up there on the noose, eh? Go on. I'll let you stand on my shoulders. You trust me, right? I did lie once, sure. But I came clean. That has to be worth something. Start over. I already told you there were no beginnings. Just turn around. Look back the way you've come. And you'll see. Go on. What in the hell was that story about? I'm sure you're asking yourself that right now. I asked myself after I after I completed it. It was it was strange. It was meta. I don't know how else to explain it. 
but I'll do my best. I'll, t- I'll talk about my intentions and, and, and sort of what I first set out to do, or at least the idea, right? So I, I love this landscape. And I think really what inspired a lot of it was the distance. Because a lot of these images you see, or that I write to, there's clearly a focal point, usually in the middle ground, possibly even the foreground. Uh, it's very clear what's going on here. I think the focal point here actually is the is the cloud work in the sky. I, f- I feel like that is would be my guess because even though it is subtle, it is dead center. It is uh, you know arguably the largest thing in the area, <laughs> in the sky, on the ground, everywhere. But uh, it's strange. I didn't choose that to be a focal point. I think what I intended this when I when I began, um, I I imagined somebody telling a story to somebody else. And at first I thought about somebody luring someone to this house because clearly there is death in the air, literally. There is a noose on the tree. It just has an overall ominous look to it. It looks like something out of True Detective or some kind of horror thriller movie, some kind of gothic noir, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so I I just imagine someone telling someone a story, luring them there. However, you can tell by the copy that uh, by the text, by the prose, that uh, that's kind of what it was, but it, it kind of wasn't. I, I feel like after I finished it, it almost felt like my approach to these completely. Because I was getting a little strange here, almost a little philo- philosophical, I think, sort of looking uh, deeper into the craft of writing and talking about how stories don't have beginnings, they don't have ends, they have metal or, or metals, they just, they kind of loop. They're, they're infinite, essentially. And so I was playing with that here, and I just kind of went with it. As I always do, I start describing what you see. I talk about the tree. I talk about the truths of stories, and and maybe that is why this this land is so ravaged here, right? Why there's only a single tree that is living. And then I started playing with the idea of imagery and perception and vantage. Again, that is because I'm so far away from this image. Everything is so small, so tiny, just almost indistinguishable. I had to really squint and I and I pulled up the um, the sort of cropped in version of the image as well while I was doing this because it was just difficult to distinguish all of this stuff. You know, and maybe I think that the overall theme of this is that, you know, death is looming on the horizon, literally, right? We have this this cloaked figure in the clouds overlooking this very bleak landscape. But I, I, I made that kind of an aside. I, I used that. I, I, I had more power and more weight to the noose hanging from the tree. However, than that directly related to death in the sky. And it's funny, the title of this, The Curse of the Rising Sun, it's such a great title. Uh, it asks a lot of questions, but I didn't, um, I didn't go there. I don't know. This story went a very different way. And I think that's one of the funnest things about doing this is uh, when I first looked at this image, I, I thought of like True Detective or or something like that. Something that has just a, I, I love the tone of that stuff. I love the gloomy atmosphere and I love writing uh, stories sort of in that genre, in that voice. And I think I did somewhat do the voice here. I mean, if you've seen True Detective, you know about Rustin Cole, who uh, would kind of just talk about all kinds of strange things um, to his partner, you know, the meaning of life, death, and, and all kinds of strange strange, odd topics. But so maybe, I, you know, maybe I did capture a bit of that here with the, uh, with the narrator, especially with the, uh, the ain'ts and the anyhows. Um, I don't know that that's what I, that's what I imagined. Um, and so I think that came into the voice of the character, but it, it, like I said, it turned into this weird meta experience. So if you pay close attention, it's, it's almost as if I'm taking you closer and closer to this image. I'm taking you through the process of me looking at something and trying to pull a story from it and all of the possibilities. I talk a lot about that when I, when I do these writing exercises is about, it's, it's so difficult because a character can go, you know, infinite amount of directions, but which is the best way to go? Which is the most interesting way? Which is the best way for the story? And I play with it. I talk about, oh, is that a noose? Is it a branch? Is it a rope that was just holding a uh, a tree swing at some point? Is there a warm meal inside this house or is there someone torturing? Is there a road? Is there no road? How did this truck get here? Yes, there is a road. No, there's not a road. So I was kind of flip-flopping back and forth because essentially that's what I do in my head. I just, I think of all of these different things that could be. uh, And then when I decide what the best one would be, usually, you know, on the fly, obviously, that's the one I write down. And hopefully that sentence leads to another sentence and I will create some kind of cohesive tale by that point. But that really wasn't this. And I think the one thing I did do is I, I played with almost 
you know, are things evil? Are things what they seem? Are things benign? You know, you never know. And that's that's what this character is doing here. He's asking questions to this um, uh, the silent um, person he's talking to, or is he is he having a conversation with himself? It's tough to say. And I believe this is the first time I've ever told a story like this, where it's it's not it's not a traditional narrative. It's it's not uh, necessarily uh, about what you're seeing. It is, but it isn't. It, it's almost like this strange, omniscient, uh, meta, weird spot uh, somewhat of a, a free writing exercise but also i think a glimpse into my thought process when i'm doing this and i didn't set out to do that whatsoever i, I honestly th set out to do like i said i set out to do a story about someone leading someone to this house with a dialogue and i don't know why uh where, where the uh the line came you know stories don't make sense stories don't have beginnings etc cetera, etc cetera. but that just triggered something in me and um this is what it became so i know this is strange i know it may have been confusing. I'm actually, I'm, I'm positively sure it was confusing. But the funny thing is, is that when I went back and I read through it, it's kind of thought provoking, at least to me. Um, it could be because, you know, I enjoy writing stories and seeing where stories come from. And even though there wasn't, I don't know how to say this, I, there wasn't technically characters there. There was really no resolution. Again, because I was sort of echoing back the fact that, you know, right here, they're circular, looping back on themselves. And just when you think you found the beginning, you realize when you turn and look behind you, oh, I guess I changed that. The problem is we're always trying to find those guideposts, you know, essentially an outline of a, of a, of a book or your life, I guess, however you want to look at it. You're always trying to find a structure. I think we're always trying to find structure. The problem is we're always trying to find those guideposts. Once you shed that concept completely, you see everything how it is actually is. And I think this really came from my subconscious because it's, it's sort of how I'm writing my novel right now, where it's... Uh, I have a rough idea of where I want to go. I know how I want it to end. I just don't know. I don't have all the quote unquote guideposts set up really. I don't have all these like micro beats of the entire story. And so I'm kind of writing blindly in a way. Pantsing, if you will, however you want to call it. Not completely pantsing, but it's interesting. It's it's really an interesting way to write. And um, I'm doing a lot of editing, obviously, a lot of backtracking. But I think that's okay because, you know, when you when you finish a rough draft, you've got to go back through the whole damn thing again and really clean it up and try to find the story. So I'm just doing it at a um, more gradual pace. However, uh, the prose is, is much, much, much cleaner, you know, once I go through it a couple of times versus creating a, a rough draft and then um, having to go through, you know, 50,000 plus words of garbage to clean it up. This is kind of an interesting way to do it. It's like it's almost like rewind, rewinding the Blu-ray or the, the movie you're watching and then sort of exploring a different path even. But this one was pretty quick. You can see I was just doing an edit. I'm already at, I'm not even in an hour yet and wrapping it up. And right here, again, still didn't know how I wanted to end it. And then it just kind of came to me, right? Just turn around, look back the way you've come and you'll see. So take that for what, what it is. I don't know. However, however you can interpret that, I don't necessarily know how I would interpret it. I have a few ideas. Again, that's why I highly suggest you try something like this. Just try to go write a story. Don't try to think too much about it because uh, you get weird stuff like this. Is this a good story? I have no idea. Is it a bad story? I don't know. There's something to it though that that kind of piqued my interest even though I finished it. It's, it's a very non-traditional narrative. This is the realm for experimentation. So... I don't feel too bad about it. Maybe it's inspired you to do some free writing, to to do something that's completely different, play with stylistic things. Don't feel like you always have to tell a traditional narrative because um, sometimes stories come from the strangest places and this image, as beautiful as it is, um, I, I did not think it would take me down this path, so. But these are the ones again, the one that, that the ones that feel more like a dialogue, monologue, however you want to call it. I, I turn these out pretty quickly. It's almost like just writing a free free form thoughts, I guess, free flowing thoughts. And we're wrapping it up right here. Welcome to the end, dear viewer. I am so glad you made it because this, in fact, was a very strange story. If you've made it this far. If you're confused, that's all right. I'm a little confused as well. But anyway, this is where I talk about uh, what I liked, what I didn't like about the story, what I may have learned from the experience. So if you listen to the writing analysis, you'll know that I, I kind of rambled on about my intention where I, I imagined someone leading someone else to this house. This could be like a murder house. I have no idea. There was uh, images of, of True Detective and, and Texas Chainsaw and all kinds of bleak, horrific things. But that's not where I went. I went to this weird place, this almost meta place, where I think almost it was a journey for you, taking you through my process while I look at a piece of artwork, how I think about story, really, all of the possibilities and which roads I do take when I write something. Also, I guess the fact how I 
why I feel like stories, we always seek structure, we always seek pattern. However, sometimes maybe we need to veer from that path. We don't, we shouldn't be so tied to it because I've been struggling myself for a long time. My other novels, my other two or three, I guess, um, there's a couple that are unpublished. They are unfinished, but I, I will finish them. I didn't traditionally outline them, at least in any kind of detailed way, right? I had sort of an idea and, and I, outline, I outline in my head a lot, right? I, I think about a story over and over and over again, and it just grows and grows and grows and grows until I feel like I have a good idea of, of the setting, of the characters who inhabit that setting, and the conflicts that arise there. And I generally have an idea of how I want to end something. Now that has changed. Knowing the end is an extremely powerful thing because the beginning should mirror the end. And I feel like those are the two guideposts at least that are going to be the most beneficial for your story. Knowing where you start and knowing where you end. The middle part is where I have all the problems. So anyway, back to my story. I used to write like this. I'm starting to write like this again because I've read a lot of craft books. I've, I've read a, a lot of blogs and, and, and listened to a lot of podcasts about people saying, you know, you just need to vomit the first draft out. You need to just outline. You need to have, you know, 24 plot points, 48 plot points, whatever it may be. These are the keys to a successful story. And I got hung up in it. I got caught in the quicksand of structure. Now I love structure. I think it's, we need it. I, I think that to, to create a compelling story, we have to have some kind of familiar structure because there's a reason why those beats work, right? They've been repeated over time. Now you can twist them, you can change them, you can flip-flop them, but only when you really know what you're doing, only when you understand sort of the basics there. But it tripped me up. I've been outlining this novel, starting this novel for some time, and I said, screw it. I read this book by Dean Wesley Smith called Writing Into the Dark, and it got me think again. When I was reading it, I was like, this is how I used to write. Not a complete pantser, not like him. Like I said, I always have an idea of the beginning, of the end, some scenes, some sporadic scenes in there. So I have kind of an idea where I'm going. So I disagree with his philosophy somewhat because he tries to say, um, if, you, if you capture the spirit of short story writing, which I'm doing here, meaning you just kind of write, you don't know where you're going, you're gonna yield a better story that way. The difference being, a short story is very short. The end is in sight. It's less to go back and fix. When you have a 50,000 plus word novel, sometimes you don't know the best thing in act three or act four until you get there. And then you got to go back and seed it in act one. Now he advises that you can do this. However, his method is more about writing 500 words or a thousand words, going back a thousand and kind of just doing that until you get white space and continuing on. So I think my philosophy has been somewhat inspired by him and in, in the way that it, it kind of reminded me that everyone has their own process you do not need to feel like you have to adhere to someone else's process really find what your process is so if you are struggling if you think you need to meticulously outline something and it's just not working for you or if you're pantsing and it's not working for you if you're writing by the seat of your pants maybe you should think about out outlining i think it goes either way and i think that the best thing i can say for for reading that book is that it, it helped me uh, discover what i used to do and how that's okay so i know this story um i didn't really analyze it too much here i i think i did quite a bit of that in the writing analysis so if you want to hear my intentions or my my thought process i i suggest you go back and listen to that section but this was fun i think it it, it taught me that um stories can be all kinds of things they can be like a film unfolding before your eyes only seeing what the characters see or they could be something else, something strange, something meta, something abstract, like this one. If anything, I hope this has inspired you to derail yourself. Have a little fun with story because your subconscious is the best tool. It's where all the weird stuff happens. And I think that we need more weird stuff happening in stories. And by weird, I mean unexpected and unique because that's where you're going to have the most fun. So if you'd like to support the channel, give me a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you like story-related content. Check out my books down in the description if you'd like to see some of my longer form work. And as always, keep reading, keep writing, and I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye. If you'd like to read the story in its non-video format, check the link in the description. I didn't edit anything else. Promise. Thanks again.